film's last answer, The Notebook. What do these films have in common? They were all written by Jan Sardi, one of Australia's top screenwriters. But what do screenwriters actually do? What you're aiming to do is to capture as much truth as possible. If screenwriting is the art form of the 21st century, then who better to tell us about the traps and triumphs of the craft than Jan Sardi? Jan Sardi has written more than a dozen screenplays that have been turned into feature films in the US as well as Australia, including Shine, for which he was nominated for an Oscar and which scored an Academy Award for Jeffrey Rush. But it's such a fine balance and I think that's where Scott's done such a fabulous job mm. and Jan Sardi. I think that it's basically about life essentially is uh, a struggle, you know, it really is. And it's difficult and it's not rosy and you don't jump out of bed every day saying, wow, isn't it great to be alive? But in a sense you should because it is great to be alive. Jan Sardi got his big break with the feature film Moving Out, the 1983 feature which starred a 14-year-old Vince Colosimo, who was in the drama class Jan was teaching. Uh, Jan had a film that, uh, a story he wanted to tell and um, I guess I sort of prodded you yeah. a bit and you were drama teaching at the time you told me about uh, stories about uh, kids that you taught yeah. and we sort of um, fleshed out a film. I was really quite entertained by uh, the kids and the situation. It was a school that I went to as well uh, 15 years earlier and um, there was a certain sort of what was going on there was just really interesting. He wrote three more features with director Michael Pattinson including the acclaimed Ground Zero which starred Colin Friels and Donald Pleasance. Donald was a wonderful presence I think in a film no pun intended. He had a capacity to bring a vitality to the set, and uh, he certainly does to Ground Zero. It, it, it actually had an international sort of feel about it, you know. I mean, it didn't do sort of greatly at the box office. In, in those days there, I think you weren't allowed to <laughs> aim so high maybe to try to dare to try to make something that didn't look like an Australian film. Then came Shine. Jan was asked by director Scott Hicks if he would write the screenplay about David Helfgott. Well, I first became interested in Shine when Scott sent me the script that Jan Sardi had written, and I realised that it was a most beautifully written script that I just felt I had to produce. The first key was to say what is the emotional through line of the story. When I first read the script, which was a couple of years ago, um, uh, it leapt off the page. Shine took more than a hundred million dollars worldwide and set up the careers of Jeffrey Rush as well as Scott Hicks, Jane Scott and of course Jan Sardi. What happened at Sundance in 1996 with Shine was like it was really quite sort of phenomenal sort of being there and I'm glad that I went and we were really quite sort of inundated with everything and everyone wanting to know what we wanted to do and I said to Jane well I've got this idea about these two brothers and it just took uh, a few years to write it, as they all do, you know. Shine's success enabled Jan to return to Australia to make his next feature, Love's Brother, a fable about two brothers that he wrote and directed, also produced by Jane Scott. She made it happen, and, and Jane is that kind of producer that she makes things happen. In 1985, I was researching various stories about Italians, and someone told me I, an anecdote. It wasn't really even a story, but it was the story of a brother who would send his brother's photo to, twerk, to get a bride, basically, from Italy. And, um, and that always stuck with me as, a, as a, a wonderful idea for a film. It seemed like the most natural thing for him to direct it, and I asked him to. She said yes. She said yes. She said yes. She said yes, Angelo. She said yes. Angelo gets up and walks out. She said yes. <laughs> <laughs> she wonders what... Suddenly, was. when it's all happening in front of you for real, yeah, the, the, the words that I've put down, yeah, um, there are real characters there and they're saying all those words, and it's really happening. I really have to pinch myself. Eh, where's the 12? There's only one pop, so forget it. Directing is like that scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark where Harrison Ford is running from that boulder, you know, and he's got us like just try and get out of the way. And that's what it feels like to be a director. And I think what it feels like to be a writer is actually pushing the boulder up to the top of the hill in the first place. Sardi collaborated again with Jane Scott on Mao's Last Dancer, based on the novel by Lee Swin Sin. 
It tells the story of Lee's defection from communist China to Australia as a ballet dancer. There's always a period where you're sort of walking around and sniffing it and trying to work out, oh God, how do I start? Where will I start? What will I do? Especially with a story like this, which takes place over many, many years. Hey, hello. Welcome to Houston. Over the Oilers. Fantastic. Definitely, it's an audience film. Um, it's one that takes you on a great journey and, and delivers a great emotional punch at the end. Mao's Last Dancer took more than $15 million at the Australian box office alone. Jan Sati's screenwriting career just keeps rolling on. Hey, I've had seven made in Australia, so um, I'm not complaining. <laughs>